too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me and your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light becomes night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. If only you, God, would slay the wicked. Away from me, you who are bloodthirsty. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, Lord, and abhor those who are in rebellion against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. Count them my enemies. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Can you hear the relationship in that? When we consider relationships, excuse me. When we consider relationship, especially relationship built on love, we realize that it's all about knowing and being known, developing intimacy. In my opinion, it's the most amazing aspect to living life in the Lord. God desires that we continue to move constantly deeper in knowing Him, and amazingly, in knowing him, we get to know ourselves as he knows us. He sees us as if we are already living in the fullness of our identity in him. And he calls us into that identity. In this place of intimacy, we experience the incredible joy of becoming us. The more time we spend with him, the more we reflect who he is. For the longest time, almost three decades into my relationship with the Lord, I was not tuned into the listening part of prayer. I was doing all of the talking or simply agreeing when a group was praying. I may have been picking up a little bit on what the Lord was saying or when he was nudging, but I took no real note of it. Things started to change when I finally realized that it was pretty ridiculous that the one who knew so little was doing all of the talking. It was time to start listening. What a concept. I want to share three stories about how this unfolded for me. The three things happened within less than two years. The first event took place around Christmas. My daughter and I were living at Camp Lejeune while my husband was stationed in Okinawa for a year. My parents had come to visit, and we decided to go for a drive to see the Christmas lights. As we were driving, someone lowered one of the car windows in order to see more clearly. Once we got home, we discovered that the window that went down refused to go back up. I decided that that needed to be remedied. So I asked my folks and my daughter to go ahead in, and I would be in in a bit. I figured that God knew how to fix the window since he knows everything, and he created everything. So I asked him to tell me how to fix it, and I told him I intended to sit there until he did. I had just sat there a few minutes when I had a very strange thought. I thought that I needed to turn the blinker on. I think it was the right blinker. So as strange as it was, I turned on my blinker. I tried the power button for the window, and up it went. I thanked the Lord and went on into the house. That event was a be still and know that I am God experience with a very functional outcome. I was awakening to the awareness that less talk and more listening was a better way to pray, and it certainly built relationship. I also learned that that weird hunch sort of thought was God speaking to me. I grew a lot in listening to God for instructions over the next year. Chris finished his year in Okinawa, and we moved from Camp Lejeune to Stafford. A 
little over a year after the window event, the next story I'm sharing happened. I was attending a weekly Bible study, and one week the leader challenged us to ask the Lord a question. We could come up with any question we liked, but it couldn't be one that was satisfied with a yes or no answer. She said to expect an answer once we asked the question. I thought about what I wanted to ask and decided that I was curious about how the country seemed to be in such a mess. This was actually over 25 years ago. I asked, if our government was designed and built on godly principles, how could we have gotten so far off track? I waited, listening, but didn't get an answer. A couple of days passed. The next morning, I had just finished making our bed and was headed to the closet thinking about what to wear when I heard loudly, I am an architect. It startled me. I quickly realized that it was the Lord and then realized that he was answering my question, but I didn't understand the answer. I responded silently with, okay, so? And he showed me, in my mind's eye, a picture of the wooden block game Jenga. He showed it to me built solidly and in alignment, rightly plumb, and then he showed it to me after holes had been poked into it and pieces placed in a way that undermined the foundation and alignment, putting it at risk of collapse. What a picture. I had my answer. This event brought a shift in our relationship. I knew that God was big. I knew that God was powerful. I knew that he's all-knowing. I also knew that he loved me and was kind. I hadn't before considered that because of our relationship, he would answer me simply because I was wondering about something he had and, and had asked. This reminded me of a picture I had seen of JFK Jr. as a little guy playing under his dad's desk in the Oval Office. His dad, the President of the United States, was there working with his son playing at his feet. His dad, because of relationship, was responsive even in the midst of bigger demands. The third event happened shortly after that. I happened upon Jesse Duplantis, a minister in Louisiana, and he was sharing on TV. He was talking about having gone into his study for his quiet time with the Lord one day. As he was in conversation with the Lord, he noticed that the Lord's tone of voice seemed sorrowful so asked what was going on. Jesse sat and listened as the Lord explained and then responded by asking if the Lord would like some company for the day. He ended up clearing his schedule and simply spent the day with the Lord. When I heard Jesse talk about noting the Lord's tone, it just really provoked jealousy in me. I'd never really considered being sensitive to the Lord's voice. I also had never considered that I could minister to the Lord. I had never considered that he might enjoy my company. All of that really stretched me. James 2.23 mentions that Abraham was called a friend of God. How about that? God Almighty enjoys our company. I started intentionally hanging out with him. God is so holy, so powerful, so big, and he loves us so thoroughly, and he wants us to be in intimate relationship with him, and he has much to say. So how do we hear what he's saying? I know many of you are likely well-developed in seeing, hearing, perceiving what the Lord expresses, but some may not be. So let's consider how God communicates with us. I made a quick, incomplete list of ways I've experienced him speaking. These include visions, dreams, his voice, pictures, memories, songs, smells, movies, license tags, nature, emotion, hunches, wonderings, circumstances, TV commercials, pets, people, and the list could go on. With an awareness that God will express himself with endless creativity, Let's have some fun practicing, hearing, seeing, perceiving. I'm going to ask Cody to join me up here. Okay, y'all, this is a workshop, so get ready. 
Cody's in a threshold time of life, and I'm hoping that this exercise will be a blessing to him. A little explanation. I refer to this exercise as the banner exercise. I first came across it at a conference where Brad Jersick was teaching and sharing. I don't know if it originated with him or if he picked it up from someone else. It's based on Song of Solomon 2.4, which says, He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. So we're going to use this shortly to ask the Lord what his banner over Cody says. When we do this, in your mind's eye, just look at the banner. Make note of the first thing that occurs to you. Once you do, then ask the Lord, why that? And make note of his answer. Also take in how you perceived it. When we get to the point of sharing, when you, sh when you share, what, what you share needs to fit into one of these three categories, strengthening, comforting, or encouraging. If you've perceived something that might not be good news, then ask the Lord what the good news is, and the good news is what you share. Remember that Psalm 139 said that God's thoughts towards us are as numerous as the grains of sand. It'll be fun to see how many thoughts God expresses through that banner over Cody. So if you'd like, close your eyes. If you see better with them open, then keep them open. But if you'd like, close your eyes. Okay, we're going to ask. Jesus, would you please show us what's on the banner over Cody? I'll give you a minute to look, ask, listen, and make note of what you hear, see, perceive, and then we'll share it with Cody. When you feel like you've got something to share, just if you'd slip your hand up so I get an idea of how many people have something. And in a bit, we'll start sharing. haven't seen something, and just ask the Lord again. Okay, this is a workshop. It's a safe place. We're learning. We're practicing. Okay, Martina, if you have a, if you get a microphone, Martina's going to go around. Okay, some instruction for Cody. Cody, as these are shared with you, it's your responsibility to partner with Holy Spirit regarding measuring, processing, and taking hold of what's shared. Okay? So no reaction required, but, but take it in. Okay, Virginia, if you want to pick someone out, if you slip your hands up. When... Oh, <laughs> there's Dad first. <laughs> Testing. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, closer, closer. <laughs> so what's on the banner, Jay? So the, on the banner was strength. And when I ask God, what do you mean by strength? Because it, you know, I automatically first think physical, and it's not physical. It's strength of character. Your ability to lead people, be the example for people, that's the strength that God sees in you. Thanks. And how did you perceive it? Did you did you see the word? I saw what? the word. Okay. Yeah. And then when I asked, I heard the. This is what I see. Okay. Was was the banner um, crosswise up and yes, down? Yes, crosswise. The, okay. Good. Thanks. Have you had the competition with Richard yet? <laughs> <laughs> what, that, that was repeated 
three, four different people had the same word, string. Thing. Before we go on to someone else, um, did any of you who had the same thing have any different expression in terms of um, when you asked the Lord why that? Cassie? I also saw an image. So the first word that popped up was strength. And I honestly kind of just, I was like, I don't know if it's that quick, God. Like, I kind of dismissed <laughs> it. I'm sorry, God. Um, but right after that, I saw like a, like a stream of water and like some creatures kind of going across it. But ultimately, I saw Cody walking across through this huge meadow, which is a really beautiful, peaceful meadow, and, like the God's light shining upon him as he crossed it. Okay, thanks. Did you ask why that? I did, and that's the image that I got. Okay. I didn't get any words. Why that, Lord? I can ask again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you get any more, we'll add to it. The only thing that I had with that, I guess, in asking why, was just um, a matter of control. Control under strength, or strength under control, excuse me. Um, so there's a, there's that, uh, aspect as, as Jim, I don't remember if it was, if it was grace or whatever the word was, um, where it's like the, the horse that, you know, is, yeah. You added meekness to that? Okay. Uh-huh. Wonderful. Controlled strength. Great. Well, my picture of the horse was a tank. <laughs> so, but it did that same thing. Um, I, strength was one of my words. Also had perseverance and endurance, but that, that strength aspect, I think, connecting to the tank, um, that picture of moving in that kingdom of God, I think, matches Cassie's uh, meadow and moving into that place with that strength and working in the kingdom of God confidently, like moving forward with that armor and that power behind him of the Lord. That's what I had. Okay, thanks. Now, when, when you got, you said three words. Were they written or did you hear them? Okay. Okay, so there was movement in the banner. Okay. I'm sorry, the tank was on there. Okay. Great, thanks. Okay, next. Oh. Yes, I saw um, a, it looked like the old campus banners and like a long triangle, and it was uh, purple and letters in gold said integrity, and asked the Lord about that, and he said, of, uh, Cody has of, of mind and word and deed, and I asked more, and he said, because he is a man that will accomplish all that I ask. Wonderful. And, um, so it's like a pennant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the long, yeah. Okay. What color was it? It was purple. Okay, with gold letters. thanks. I, yeah, thank you. You said that. I didn't take it in. Thank you. Who else? Um, okay. I'm not sure what it means, but the first word that popped into mind was the word cherry. And the visual that I got was a big branch of uh, blooming cherry blossoms. And so when I asked him what the meaning was, he said that he's going to really bloom you in ways that are unexpected. Great, thanks. Jennifer, what did the pennant look like? I'm sorry. It was just a long white banner, and um, the I saw the branch. Uh, it was like it was painted on the left-hand side. Okay. Thank you. I didn't see a, a banner. But I've done your exercise before. <laughs> yeah, you were uh, ready. I never see a banner. <laughs> okay. Um, but as you were talking, before you even got through with saying, you know, what all you wanted us to do, I I just got a flash in my 
mind's eye, I guess, of kindness and happiness. And I said, why that, Lord? And he said, because he comes from good people and was taught well. And then the second thing was adventure, uh, because he's so young and starting out his life and has many great adventures ahead of him. Super, thank you. Could, wait, before you give it back, can you, um, you said you got yeah. that. How did you, how did you perceive it? How did you get it? It was just a thought. So know? it was a thought. It was, yeah. it was a word thought versus yeah. a picture. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All the different ways. No, I'm going to be very different because I don't know Cody, I guess. But I saw a banner. It was red. And I saw the Lamb of God on that banner, and what came to me was scriptural. I am the bread of life come down from heaven. He who believes in me will never die, but will have life eternal. I thought that was beautiful. Thank you so much. Taking it in. <laughs> okay, I got a, it was an impression word. I didn't see it, but the word was courage. And I asked the Lord, and he said, because he's stepping out in faith. I thought, well, that's a no-brainer. So I was trying to second-guess myself, like, is that for real? But that's what he said. He's stepping out in faith, and courage was the word. Right. And you, you said you got it as a word. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I didn't see the word. Okay. But I, you just, I perceived the yeah. word. Yeah. Thank you for explaining that. I think it's helpful to understand the different ways. How about anybody... Young, <laughs> which is almost everybody from me, but you know. Any? Did you have your hand up before, Jim? Yes. Okay. Oh, we've got one. We've got one. All right. Um, Mine was uh, difficult to understand the word. I knew it started with a CR, and I couldn't quite understand it. I said, Lord, what is it you'll have to explain? Because it was as if I couldn't understand the language. And he said it was crime. And I went, yikes, I'm not saying that. <laughs> What's the good news? <laughs> and um, I, I thought of uh, Victor, and I said, can I say crime fighter? And he went, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love that. Thanks. So again, I did not see a banner, and before you even started, I saw the word blessing. And, and the word was very clear, but it wasn't really on a banner, it was just kind of there, like, kind of like a neon type thing. And um, so I said, why? And he said, because he has been, and he will be. Wonderful. Thank you. Well, I knew I was coming today, and so <laughs> <laughs> I actually saw this this morning before before the service. But uh, I, I I had the word I had the phrase "precious to the Lord," and uh, I didn't really see it. It was more a perception of the phrase in my mind, and so I didn't really ask the Lord why until here. Uh, and it's just uh, because He is a young man, and we need young men. Uh, especially right now, who are willing to step out and uh, be bold for the Lord. And so I, I, that's one reason why I think, I mean, we're all precious to the Lord, but I think he's saying that, that this particular aspect with Cody is important right now. So, and, and very significant. I also just want to encourage anybody else who maybe is not real comfortable with these kinds of things, uh, if you think you have a word, please don't be bashful. It is a workshop. This is a safe place to just say, well, I, don't know, but I, here's what maybe is happening. So take a chance, okay? Takes a, it takes a, you have to take a risk often with faith. Thanks, Jim. Matt had his hand up. Oh, and Julie, too. Yeah, I, um, <clears throat> a few of the words that I think I heard was um, I challenged He's going to be challenged, um, uh, growth, stretched, um, but also um, I heard like stability. And the visual that I got 
and maybe this is the Floridian in me, was <laughs> um, at the beach. If you've ever been to the beach where they, they fly these the airplanes and behind it they have something that, you know, usually it's like buy two shirts, nineteen ninety nine or something like that. <laughs> on the, Eat it, I like this banner and I saw like challenged, growth, stretched, and then I saw stability and um, kind of like, you know, like a banner behind a, an airplane at a beach. That's what I got. Great. Thanks, Matt. I love your visual. Hello. I saw the word that I saw first was like so generic. I was like, God, I'm not sharing that. Everybody's going to share that. And but then there, but then you know. So it was two words, and they were both like this tall and in perfect font, like Times Roman, you know, like that high. And the the background was like beyond white, with a very light blue coming into like the letters, like very like beyond what we see. You know what I'm saying? Beautiful. Um, and the first word, and I was like, no, it's too embarrassing to say that word, but it's love. And I was like, well, well I was thinking, well, what's distinct about that? Because of the, um, the fullness of love that you are and live. And it's just a very special kind of just beingness that you are in love. Like what a lot of us aspire to be, it's just who you are. And you already emanate that. Um, the second word in the same font, same size everything, was purity. And behind that is maintain at all costs your purity no matter what. It's vital. Thanks, Julie. When you first sat down, I heard a company of eagles. So I asked the Lord what that meant, and he said, he's not just a leader, he's a leader of leaders. Super. Thank you, Terry. Yeah, sometimes when you're around prophetic things, it'll trigger the prophetic. And so when everybody was sharing these things about Cody, uh, we all know Cody's getting ready to go to the, into the Army. A lot of times you send your kids off. And they come back different. But, uh, Cody, you're going to influence the world. The world isn't going to influence you. And that's the strength, the courage, and I think that things that everybody have shared about you. And I just tell your mom and dad, when Cody comes back home, you'll be the same guy. <laughs> You're doing your laps. <laughs> this is real simple. It's just real simple. I saw a simple banner, and the word hope just popped out. And what he said, he must remember that all your hope is in him. So when every time you get into a situation, there's a situation, you have to remember all of your hope is in, in, is in Christ Jesus. Yeah, that was a saying here about things when you're going over. Um, you'll be in some situation that you may forget um, that you lost sight of strength or you have to remember, he said, that your hope is in him, okay? It's a simple word, hope. Just remember that. Thanks, Captain. I saw two banners over your head, Cody. Um, they're blue banners. There's black letters with red borders on them. Uh, the, the top one said freedom, uh, and the bottom one said choice. And when I asked the Lord, We have, you know, you step out of one one society into another when you go military. You know, I had a similar experience. And when I look back, um, I experienced a freedom to make choices that, you know, I felt restrained, you know, maybe in my society I grew up in. But that society I grew up in still affected the choices I made and, uh, and guided me in, in the right direction. Uh, more times than not, and when I asked the Lord, that was uh, that was the meaning of those two words. And even though you're stepping out of one society into another, that uh, what the Lord's taught us in the society that we grew up in our formative years still guides us uh, in that new freedom. 
Thank you, Sam. Okay, um, in light of the time, we're going to wrap this up. Um, if anyone else has anything that they haven't shared, would you please be sure to pass it along to Cody privately or, or however you can work that out. Um, thanks, Becky. And Becky's made note of, of some things so that in case you don't remember all this, Becky's kept track for us. Um, this banner exercise, Lord, thank you so much for speaking to us and sharing with Cody. Lord, I ask you to impress his heart with the things that you want him impressed by, by from you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, this is something that you can just practice anywhere you are if, if you've um, enjoyed engaging with this. Um, I find it really useful in traffic. Um, just, just, asking, just asking the Lord, what's the banner over that driver say? And then it helps inform my praying for them, which, which helps me avoid other thinking regarding circumstances. And so it can be really useful, you know, if you're going down the aisle, kids in school, you know, you can do these things. And you can either share what you've seen and, and use that as an opportunity to, um, to chat about some of these things or just um, to be self-informed regarding someone. And it'll be interesting to see what the Lord will let you in on. Um, just back to the listening and hearing. As you spend time with the Lord, consider asking him questions and follow-up questions and then just listening. And then perhaps these are some of the things that I've enjoyed Asking, ask how he would like to spend your time together and then listen. Ask how he sees the situation and what his perspective is and listen. Ask what he likes about you and listen. That can be really fun. Ask how he sees you differently than you see yourself and listen. So in Jesus' name, I just bless you in this increasing intimacy and in developing relationship with the Lord. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Thanks, Cody. Uh. Thank you, Brian. Okay. Come on, Joe, come on up, brother. Wow, that was awesome, Jan. Thank you. I wish I'd had that workshop 40 years ago. Um, God has spoken, and he is still speaking. Um, you know, he says in Hebrews, today, if you'll hear his voice, not 2,000 years ago, but today. So he's, he has spoken, and he's still speaking. I mean, why wouldn't he want to speak to his bride? What if um, when, you know, we get married, and you go on your honeymoon, you come home, and, uh, you know, you go to work the next day, you, you, and then you uh, come home from work, and the wife meets you at the door and uh, asks you how your day was, and you say, well, those days of me speaking are all over. Uh, I've written everything down in that book over there on the coffee table that, that if you need to know what I feel like or what I want to say, it's in there. That'd be crazy. So, anyway, thank you, Pastor Jim, for hearing his voice concerning spiritual gifts. We know that's not something that has just happened this past couple months, but it's been a way of life for you and, and your Christian walk and conversation. Um, we give you a little history and background uh, of the prophetic in my life and in the church. So I've got 30-plus uh, years to download in just two hours and 45 minutes. Um, <laughs> Just joking about the two hours and 45 minutes. The 30-plus years is correct, though. Um, prophetic ministry uh, in the Western church was revived in the early 80s and reestablished. Uh, I became aware of it and started to seek and earnestly desire it in the early 1990s. So you might say, well, well Joe, are you a prophet? And I'll have to tell you, no, I'm not a prophet. But uh, I do have a prophetic gifting after the New Testament pattern. So um, 
over the years I've been to uh, three-day conferences, uh, mostly at Morning Star Ministries in Charlotte, North Carolina, um, where people from around the world came, you know, 1,000 people, 1,500 people for three-day conferences. Uh, when we were there, there were actual prophets that taught, you know, courses and workshops uh, while we were there. Uh, now there, there are real uh, prophets in the New Testament. After all, it says that one part of the fivefold ministry is a prophet. And so these are people that could stand you up uh, and they could, uh, they could tell you your name. They could tell you the street you live on. They could tell you how many children you have. And then they could name them all from the youngest to the oldest. So how many of you, that, that'll get your attention, right? So um, uh, I was on prophetic teams that would minister at these uh, conferences. Uh, we had people that sign up for different time slots, and they would come in. We would pray over them and have a prophetic word for them. Uh, there was time set up for practical application and workshops. Uh, some, of the, uh, some of the classes actually got the phone book out and flipped it over and went doink and dialed that number and started prophesying over people right on the spot. There were people burst into tears, people have gotten healed, people have gotten converted just from that type of uh, ministry. So um, uh, I've been stood up during these things in front of a, of a thousand people and with the prophet sitting right in the front row critiquing you and you have to pick somebody and read their mail right on the spot. So. And uh, a real prophet is standing there <laughs> providing instruction and guidance along the way while, while you're doing that. So I've listened to many hours, many tapes. Um, my posture for, uh, for 20 years was to seek and earnestly desire. Come on, Lord. <laughs> uh, spiritual gifts, and, and namely that of, of prophecy, the New Testament um, pattern for prophecy. Um, during that 20 years, uh, there was not a time hardly that I can remember, not a Sunday, that I didn't receive a word of edification for the body of Christ. And um, I mean, it just, it was just, that's just the way it was. Um, early on in the charismatic church, you could give an extemporaneous word from, uh, from the congregation while we were worshiping. There'd be a pause, and you could, uh, you know, give a word. You know, in Corinthians 14.29, it says, let the prophets speak two or three and let the others judge. Okay? It doesn't say let them submit what they got, and then you get it approved, and then you speak. It says let them speak and then judge. That's the biblical pattern. So um, you might, and, and you know, during that time, it seemed like the same people would speak, you know, each time or, you know, frequently, week after week. And some people might say, well, why, you know, why does brother and sister so-and-so always get a word? They always seem to get a word. Well, I think it's because I made myself available. Um, I was married to a school teacher for uh, 24 years before God called her home. And I know we have some public school teachers here today. Uh, and sometimes you have to call for a substitute teacher. And uh, so when you call that administrator in the morning, you know, you don't, that administrator is not going to call 40 people over the next hour and a half at 5.30 in the morning. Who are they going to call? They're going to call that one that always says, here am I, send me Lord. Okay? So if you make yourself available... You know, God is more apt to, to use you. And uh, I don't think he he's, he's likely to use the, the casual person that's just going to sit there and go, well, here I am, Lord, you know, do something. You have to seek and earnestly desire it. You have to be, make yourself available to him. Um, so many times a prophetic word would contain uh, a theme that the pastor was speaking on that morning or, or what was going to be, um, sh you know, the next song that, was going to be some. It would confirm that. And, uh, you know, it was kind of spirit-led. It was a, a harmony of what was going on there. And, a, and, a, and a, you know, a prophetic word giving during the worship time 
is really, uh, it can change the atmosphere. I mean, you can, you can it's for exhortation, all right? We're, you know, um, we're worshiping the Lord. You can feel everybody in the body, things elevate. You can feel people sing a little louder. I mean, we're exhorting each other like charge, you know? And so a word given during a worship time can be very powerful. Okay, so that's a little bit of background history. Who can prophesy? In one word, everyone can prophesy. Isn't that correct, Brother Jim? If Jim said yes, that's what the Lord says, that settles it. So, and that's no matter how young you are or how old you are. Okay? I mean, if you're 250 years old, that might not work. But, you know, it doesn't matter how young you are or how old you are, everybody can prophesy. Okay, um, if you're born from above and a new creation in Christ, you may all prophesy. Look, if, if Joe Butner can do it, anybody can do it. Turn to your neighbor and say, if Joe Butner can do it, anybody can do it. Amen? That's right. <laughs> all right, that's enough. So I got a little bit of uh, prophetic etiquette here, uh, just some do's and don'ts. Some of the don'ts are actually reflect an Old Testament ideology of the prophetic. So what is, uh, what is the prophetic not? It's not for public rebuke or correction, okay? Um, if you have a problem with your brother, you go see him in private. If he won't hear you, you go get Brother Sam or, 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 uh, or Matthew to go with you, you know, Tell them you'll get them a hamburger afterwards or something and go patch things up with someone. But you don't correct anybody in public. All right, pu uh, prophetic ministry is not for correcting the leadership. Okay, you don't say. Uh, <laughs> so anyhow, I mean, Pastor Jim doesn't need correcting anyway. You don't say, well, gee whiz, you know, we, uh, the Lord would say, I don't like the color carpet in here or something. That's not what prophetic ministry is for. It's not for correcting the church. You know, the Lord would say, if you add on to the church, I'll be displeased. I'll be, you'll lose my favor. If you don't, if you're worried about adding on to the church, you go see leadership, and they'll welcome that. They'll say, we've prayed about it. We've thought about it. We feel good about it, and we hope you do too, and move on. It's not for predicting the future. Okay, um, you don't, you know, in the year 2035, there's a bypass coming through. It's going up through the side parking lot here and right through the pavilion. That isn't what New Testament prophecy is for. Even though there are some New Testament prophets in the five-fold ministry that can predict the future, the simple prophetic as it relates to the gifts in Corinthians uh, don't contain, you know, um, predicting the future. So anyway, these are Old Testament uh, viewpoints of the prophetic. And uh, so let's make sure we don't do that, okay? You'll ruin it for everybody. And, and i got to say, I've never really seen a lot of that in 30 years. It can happen. I've heard about it. Pastor Jim's heard about it. Um, but the, the cure can be worse than a problem or offense. And a lot of times, uh, congregations and churches have thrown the baby out with the bath water, and we're all the poorer for it. So it says, let everything be done in decency and in order, and in order, all right? So what if somebody, you know, one in a million chance gives a prophetic word that's not correct or not, doesn't line up with Scripture? You know, somebody says, uh, I, Lord your God, say, you know, that uh, times are hard, times are trying. I know many are worried and scared. To tell you the truth, sometimes I get worried and scared. Uh, how many of you raise a red flag for that right there? There's a good chance. Raise a red flag. That is, look, that's incorrect. So what do you do about that? Well, in, the, in the remote chance that ever happened, look, we're all family, right, like Jan said. It's a t just correct it. So hopefully it'll be somebody beside Pastor Jim. Okay, he doesn't have to be the bad guy for everything. You know, uh, look, a general in the Army... He, he's, he doesn't load uh, the bullets up in the weapons. He doesn't drive the tank. He doesn't fill the Jeep up with gas. He's got people for that. 
hopefully, you know, if, if that ever happened, let somebody, Matthew, Sam, Pastor Richard, come up. You put your arm around the person. You say, brother, sister, whoever it is, first of all, we appreciate your boldness for speaking for the Lord. Not a lot of people will do that. We commend you for that. And sometimes when you speak, you get a little nervous and say things that just aren't just right. Uh, we all know that God doesn't get scared. He's the captain of the Lord of hosts, okay? He's never lost a battle. And so we just want to make sure that we get the record straight on that. And that's it. That's not very hard. We didn't have to board the church up, defrock Pastor Jim. God's still on the throne. All right, so look. Uh, the, in Proverbs it says, without the strength of the ox, the stall is clean. But if you want the strength of the ox, you have to get and shovel the, the mess out of there every once in a while. Amen? So if we want the strength of the ox, sometimes we might have to clean up a mess. But it's, it's not that big a deal. Okay. Now, what is a prophetic New Testament pattern for uh, prophetic ministry? Um, it can be used to reveal gifts and call them forth in other believers. It can be used during intercession. Um, you can prophesy over your waiter or waitress in the um, restaurant. You begin to have, be sensitive to them. You know, you, you employ what Jan just said. You, you get sensitive. You, you get your antennas up. And the more you do that, the more skilled you'll be at it. And you can prophesy over someone. A lot of times they burst into tears. Uh, when I worked for Bell Atlantic, I, t I could tell a bunch of stories if I had time. But I, I was on a residential service call. I'm in a... Uh, this kitchen and the young mother's there and a the little baby's in a, um, one of these things you walk around in. And I just became aware of the little guy and I prophesied over him right in the, uh, right in the kitchen there and got paid for it too. So, um, uh, you know, it can be used to reach unbelievers and lead people to Christ like the woman at the well where she said, come see a man which told me all the things that I ever did, is this not the Christ? She was converted, all right? Uh, during worship, I've been drawn to um, people on the other side of the, 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 the congregation. You know, I begin to just sense they're, uh, they were going through a hard season or something, have a word for them. You don't go over there, and I just whisper in their ear and give it to them very discreetly, orderly, and quietly. It's a little more difficult to do in a smaller church, but... I mean, that can happen. I mean, there's lots of, uh, that's not everything that the New Testament uh, prophetic is for, but it's some of the things. Okay, other nuances are, is prophetic ministry is all about timing. Timing is everything. Uh, this co comes by experience. And uh, I, I have to say, I got, I think I got very good at the proper timing. Um, you know, some of us here raise cantaloupe and um, tomatoes and things like that. If you pick them a week before or the week after, it's not, you know, it's not the best thing. You want to pick them at just the right time. It's the same thing with uh, the prophetic timing. Um, so I think uh, Roxy and Joyce, you all probably uh, skip roped. You know, when you got the little girl sitting there waiting to jump in, that's what I see in prophetic timing. In Proverbs 15, 23, and excuse me, I'm talking so fast, I'm trying to get all this, get all this out because I only got two hours left. Uh, Proverbs 15, 23, a word fitly spoken in due season is like apples of gold in settings of silver. There's nothing better than to deliver, deliver a word in the proper time. Another thing is um, don't start off in the spirit if you give a word to the body of Christ, a word of edification, or to some person, don't start off in the, in the spirit and wind up in the flesh. And I can, tell, I can tell the first two words that come out of somebody's mouth if it's from heaven or not. And I can also tell when they get to that point where that's it, that's it. But sometimes people keep going. It doesn't mean they say anything false, it could be completely true and biblical, but it wasn't what they were supposed to do. They're supposed to just give this one word and stop. Um, so don't start off in the spirit, wind up in the flesh. And that leads right into my next point. God does not ramble on. <laughs> he doesn't. 
maybe some pastors at other churches do, but God doesn't ramble on when it concerns the, um, the prophetic. Look, don't get up and read the entire Encyclopedia Britannica. Uh, Pastor Jim's not going to tolerate that. And you can't blame the man. And many of us are not going to tolerate it either. So, look, um, finally, the one last nuance is uh, prophetic ministry does not convey anything that cannot be corroborated, validated, established, and authenticated by the inerrant, infallible word of God. That's a good place to say amen right there. I almost ran down there and got in the seat and hollered amen. I mean, really. If you don't get anything else, remember that. All right? We can, it says when you come together, you might have a revelation. It might be new to me. It might be new to one or two other people. But it isn't new to God. Okay? You don't look at Gabriel and say, well, that never occurred to me, Gabriel. No, God knows everything. Okay, so it might be new to us, but it's not new to him. It's got to line up with this. Amen? All right, so we'll give a prophetic example. And many of y'all might not have caught it, but Re Rebecca Sanchez has given some prophetic words during the worship time. They paused. She read a scripture. She's prophesying the word of God. Okay, so... In 1 Corinthians 14.32, this is very important. It says, the spirit of the prophets is subject to the prophets. That means you're in charge of the light switch. You can flip that light switch on, flip it off, flip it on, flip it off. The apostle Paul said, I pray in the understanding and I pray in the spirit. He doesn't say I pray in the understanding and then I just sit in there minding my own business and I started praying in the spirit. No, it said he did it. Okay, so if I do something dumb or you do something dumb or out of order, it's not the Holy Spirit's fault. It's our fault. Okay, we, we're in charge of that. So we cooperate with the Holy Spirit, though, and yield our members to him. But we control that light switch. So I'm going to flip the light switch on right now and just give a little uh, prophetic word. Um, when God restores something, he does always exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or think. If any man be in Christ, he's better off than Adam before the fall. Uh, Adam was not a joint heir with Jesus Christ, but we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Jesus was not ashamed to call us brothers and sisters. We are adopted into the beloved. Adam was not seated in heavenly places. But he has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Adam had the spirit of the, of the Lord upon him. God walked with him in the garden. We have the Holy Spirit living within us. Know ye not, know ye not, you are the temple, Christ in you, the hope of glory. So if any man be in Christ, he is, an, he is better off than Adam before the fall. Light switch off. Done. That was a prophetic word. That was a prophetic exhortation. It contained a revelation that we're better in Christ than Adam before the fall. We're not looking back to the garden. That was a squatter's camp compared to what we have in Christ now. Okay? Um, because God always does exceedingly abundantly above all. He doesn't just restore and make it up to snuff like men do. He does it better. It, it, it provides comfort and exhortation. The only thing missing from that word was timing and the unction or, or anointing or power because I was just doing it as a, um, as a mechanical exercise. So, um, in summary, you know, walking in the prophetic is a lifestyle uh, anybody can do it. Um, uh, it's it's partnering with God, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ. So I have a I have a final thing. I have I have a prophetic word for for Philip Dove. And uh, can you stand up for a minute, Philip? If it's okay, I'm not going to put you on the spot or embarrass you, brother. I might embarrass myself, but I won't do that to you. Um, this is what I have for you. Uh, 
Brother Philip, uh, that you take your walk with God very seriously. That you're a Christian, uh, not just on Sunday only, but you're a Christian on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. You love justice and you love fairness. And you also rule your own spirit, Philip. Uh, boy, I wish Susan could say that about me. Uh, you know, Moses was the meekest man of earth. And in the book of Exodus, it says so. Moses wrote that book. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. And so meekness, like Western men, we don't know what meekness means. Meekness is strength under control. And you rule your own spirit, uh, Philip. And um, you're, you're strong on the outside and you're strong on the inside, but it's under control. You rule your own spirit. In Proverbs 16, 32, it says, He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit is better than he that takes a city. This kind of scripture was written for fellows like you. Uh, Philip, your Christian walk, has not gone unnoticed with the Lord. And not, he not only loves you, he likes you, Philip. He likes being with you. He enjoys you. You bless the Lord. Um, did you have a grandfather that was uh, a very a godly man? You did? Um, what, what was his name, Philip? Can you share what your grandpa's name was? It was Harvey also, like your dad. Okay. Did uh, did he sing the old hymns? Did he like them old hymns? Do you recall? Or... Yeah, okay. Well, did he have a tractor? I'm seeing a, some guy on a tractor riding around singing hymns. He cut the fields. That's what I've been seeing. Um, I feel like he was a great influence on you and, and your walk today. I think he prayed for you, and, and, uh, and a lot of who you are today, you reflect his character and nature. Um, I, I, Philip, I, I, I feel like you like the uh, contemporary songs a lot, but you like the old hymns even better. Uh, is that true? See, when you do this, you got to be able to hold it together. <laughs> So, anyways, um, uh, do you watch the Gaithers, Philip? You, the Gaithers on TV, are they singing and all them, them people singing them old hymns, ever? Shucks. <laughs> well, look, uh, this is this is what I have for you. I feel like uh, how many of y'all listen to the Gaithers and them old hymns and all? I mean, it's awesome. Uh, Philip, I believe you have a voice in you like one of them people that sing on the Gaithers. I mean, a world-class voice, a gift in you um, that, I mean, I'm talking where heaven will come down, where it will be used during uh, revivals. It could start a revival. People get healed. People rededicate their lives. I think you've got a, a voice in you uh, like, those, like that, those people do. Um, I know your last name is Dove. It's symbolic of the Holy Spirit. And I think your voice and your singing and the things that, that God has put in you, I'm going to call it forth. I believe that, that heaven will come down when you sing. And it will change the atmosphere and change people's lives uh, for God's glory. <clears throat> um, do you have horses? No? You want to get some? <laughs> Anyways. Uh, so that was just me. You can ignore all that. But, but look, uh, Philip, you might say, have you ever thought about that? I know you like singing. Do you like singing? You like singing, don't you? Well, you ever, have you ever thought about maybe singing for the Lord or what your gifts are? I mean, like, in other words, what I'm driving at is um, you might wonder how you get there. How would I get there? I suggest you get with uh, Sue, Susan. She's classically trained, and get up here on a weeknight and and get get singing. 
till you get used to hearing your voice. And I know you're not going to promote yourself and run after things, but you might want to. You might want to. You might want to do that. And I know she'd be happy to do that. And the pastor would see you have be glad to do that. So if y'all if y'all feel comfortable, let's just pray for our brother right now. Lord, we thank you for Philip. We thank you for the things that you've purposed in him. We thank you for the design of kindness you have upon him. Lord, we pray you glorify yourself in him and you bring, bring this gift out of him, Lord, for your glory. Transform your people, Lord God. Let him glorify you, Lord God, with his voice. Make a way where there is no way, Lord. Open a door for him. Show him the way. And we'll give you all the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Brother Philip. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Pastor, on behalf of Jan and I, we appreciate you giving us a chance. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. I want to thank Jan and Joe. And uh, hearing personal testimony is always powerful. Uh, I think we have a tendency to see pastors and other people who get up regularly sort of in a different light. You know, we're just people like everybody else. <laughs> and uh, But sometimes just hearing somebody who's just part of the congregation get up and share something like this is just so impactful to to hear personal experience that they've had. And it's not, uh, it's not you don't think it's coming out of some lecture book or it's, or it's some teaching above and beyond you somehow or something like that. Am I making any sense here? This is why personal testimony is so powerful. This is why your testimony is powerful. When you share your experience with people, that's what transforms lives. You can talk about theoretical stuff all day long, abstract. You can talk about what the Bible says all day long, and that's all wonderful. But what people want to know is, how did the gospel change your life? How did your life change? And, uh, and you say, this is my experience. You know, you don't have to have to know the Bible front and backward. You say, here's what happened in my life. And that, that's what people want to know. And you all prophesied today. A lot of you did, didn't you? You shared a word. You saw a word. You shared it. That was prophecy. That's the, 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 the level of prophesying that Joe was talking about. And Paul says, earnestly desire to prophesy, right? That's important because you're speaking forth the word of God. You're impacting people's lives. Uh, it can be that simple. So uh, when we, often when we pray with people, I just want to emphasize a point that was made earlier. When, we, when, we, when we're praying for people for healing and deliverance, uh, often we'll get a word for that person. Maybe you just have a, something that comes to mind, a vision, maybe just an image. It could be very simple. You may have no idea what that image is. What, what's that mean, right? And you have to learn to trust the Holy Spirit. You've asked him to lead, trust him. And you go for those hunches that Jan mentioned. And we can easily talk ourselves out of those things. I think Julie shared, well, she saw some, some word first, and she's like, nah, and uh, <laughs> pushed it aside. It's really easy to do that, because we think, that's just me, I'm, I'm just thinking that. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's the Holy Spirit. And so you have to, I think you need to go for that. But you say, you do it with humility, and you say, you know, I don't know what this means. I have no idea what this means. But what I saw was this. Does that mean anything to you? And they may be like, no. Or they may burst into tears because you just hit on a key to their whole healing right there. Something that, that touched on a memory they had or whatever it may be. It's amazing what can happen with just something simple like that. And often you'll see something, you may not know what it is, but ask, Lord, why are you showing me this? And how am I supposed to pray into this? And how, how should I pray for this person? And he'll start to give you those answers. One of the things that Jan often says is, ask the follow-up question. That seems so obvious, but we so often don't do that. <laughs> right? I know I don't. Uh, so you think you hear from the Lord. The, the next question you should ask is, well, okay, what does that mean? And what am I supposed to do with that? Ask that follow-up question. And it's so helpful, but uh, we don't want to get off into the flesh. Joe mentioned it, and um, so when we have a word like that, we have an image like that, we share that image, but resist the temptation to start trying to speak into that in your own wisdom, because you may not have a clue what that means whatsoever, and you start rambling on about it, and, and you're missing it, and you're really getting in the way of the Holy Spirit at that point. So just share what the Lord gives you, if you ask the follow-up and he says, do this, then, then you share that. But, again, the uh, spirits of prophets are subject to the prophets, so 
Like Joe said, there's a point where you get to the end of what you saw or you heard, and you leave it there. Give it to the person. Make sure they understand they, they need to judge that word. Don't ever approach somebody and say, well, thus says the Lord over your life, and here's the word of God for you. Don't do that. You could be totally wrong. Have some humility to say, I don't know for sure, but I'm seeing this, I'm hearing this. Does this mean anything to you? And we often would just approach it that way. Say, well, literally we just say, I could be totally off on this. I could be totally wrong. Here's what I'm saying. I don't understand it. Maybe it means something to you. And let that person take that. So you don't have to be afraid of this thing. If you approach it with humility, okay, if it doesn't mean anything to the person, it doesn't mean anything to the person, right? Nothing lost there. You said, I don't know. But if you say, God Almighty says this about you, and you're totally off, then you're going to look like an idiot, a fool. And you are a fool if you do that. Okay? So don't do that. Offer it in humility. See what the Lord does with it. But you, you preface it with, I'm not sure about this, but I think I'm seeing this, and I don't want to mis- mistake, make the mistake of not sharing it in case it does mean something. So here it is. You judge it. So, uh, and often those, those hunches are so powerful and they're key to what God wants to do. And in a, in a congregational setting, what happens so often is, we, I talk about this at Wellspring Services, when we come together, we're more relaxed, we have a very simple service format. Um, we encourage people to pray out loud because when people begin to pray and share what they're hearing from the Lord and they're praying as they're hearing from the Lord, often that prompts something else in somebody else. It sparks that awareness in somebody else. And it's so fascinating to watch the Holy Spirit take this and, and, you know, light a little fire here, a little spark here, and then the fire grows over here, and, the, and it gets even brighter over here, and you start adding. People start adding to that as the Holy Spirit leads, and the prayer begins to build on that. But it takes that first person stepping out in faith and, and saying something, and then, then the Holy Spirit can use that. And I think he just loves that dynamic of the, the gathering of the believers. So we shouldn't have the attitude that one, any one person has all the answers, right? It's, it's all of us coming together. And as Joe mentioned in 1 Corinthians 14, it talks about that, that when you come together, each one has, you know, and, and we bring these things together. And uh, too often we've made this a very passive experience in terms of our worship, right? You have a speaker up here, you sit there, you're the audience, you sit and listen. You, you, you applaud at all the appropriate places, you laugh at the jokes at the appropriate places, and you go home. Well, that's all very passive. We don't want to be that way. And so we really want to see the Holy Spirit given freedom in our, in our worship and our time together as instructed by the Lord and as we have guidance in the Scriptures. And I appreciate so much what was shared today. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to close out, having said all that. And uh, Joe, I appreciate you not taking the full two hours and 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and Joe agonized about trying to get this down, get it down, get it down, get it down. He's, he told me about it. He's editing, editing, editing. And uh, that's a difficult process to do, but it does refine it. And uh, the Lord uses that. So we're going to close out. Uh, if you have an offering or a tithe you want to leave in one of the offering plates, they're, they're here for you. And uh, if you would like to receive prayer today uh, for healing, for any other need, uh, maybe a prophetic word. Maybe you just need to hear from the Lord. Maybe the Lord's going to speak to you through somebody here if you want to stay and, and be prayed for. This past Friday night, we saw a lot happening with people. It was very refreshing, very exciting to see what the Lord did. We saw people healed. We saw people set free from a d- demonic influence. Um, it's very calm what we do. We just let the Lord do what he does, right? Um, in, when you had that kind of freedom. And uh, I want to see that happening more on Sunday mornings. All right, we don't want to hide it away on a Friday night or on a Sunday night. We want to see it happening when the body gathers together. So we've been going through a lot of messages that are very very uh, information intensive, right, with this series, going through 1 Corinthians, trying to get a, trying to get a whole chapter in every time if possible. Um, and uh, it hasn't left a lot of room for other things. But... We're going to try to give the Holy Spirit more room to operate. Does that sound like a good idea? If you don't like that idea, then just raise your hand now. <laughs> Not to put anybody on the spot. But uh, speak now forever, hold your peace. <laughs> okay. And, uh, but we're going to do it as the Lord instructs. All right. So if anybody's getting worried about this whole thing, 
we mentioned speaking in tongues and so forth. We're not going to let it get out of control. It's going to be under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, according to the Scripture, as we're given instruction. All right? But I do believe that we can't just shut down all of those giftings of God uh, in the interest of uh, decency and in order. He says, earnestly desire to prophesy, but all things should be done decently and in order. All right? So we desire the spiritual gifts. We walk in them, but everything needs to be done appropriately according to the leading of the Lord. And that's my ideal for the church. I've always believed that the church, if the church is just being the church, if we're healthy, the church will reproduce. If the flock is healthy, it reproduces. And even before I knew anything at all about healing or anything else, because I certainly wasn't raised in any of that, uh, my sense of call as a pastor has been from the very beginning just to see the church healthy. That's been my goal. And so I want to see this. We've been praying for this for a long time. And uh, please pray with me about that. Father, we just close out tonight, uh, today. With the, yeah, we'll stay the rest of the day. The day uh, see if anybody has a prophetic word. <laughs> we close out today, Father, um, our time together. Thank you for all that has been shared. And I thank you for what you're going to do with that, what you've already done with it, what you're going to do with that. I thank you for the encouragement that was received today. For people to just step out, take that chance, and, and understand that every one of us can hear from you, that you want to talk to us, that you do delight in us, you do care about us. You are the God who speaks. You didn't write a book and then sit down and shut up. You are the God who speaks. And uh, you are the God of relationship. You designed us for relationship. You designed us for intimacy. You designed us for that closeness. You designed us for your own pleasure. To, to be with us forever. You delight in us to that degree. So Lord, we desire a greater intimacy with you. We want to be able to hear your voice more clearly. Forgive us when we get so distracted, we just don't even listen. I uh, thank you for the reminder today, Lord, that we just need to listen uh, to you. We don't do so much talking. We need to stop thinking of prayer as just making requests all the time in our wish list, uh, but, but just sharing that time with you, listening to you. So, Lord, we pray over the offering, the tithes that are to be brought here now. We pray over the time to follow uh, as people perhaps come forward to receive prayer. Uh, we ask that you would move in a powerful way during that time. So, Lord, we love you. We give you all honor and glory, and we praise your holy name. Amen. So, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. If you want prayer, please stay. <laughs>